So if the DOJ can't indict him out of the race, it's going to be up to the regime media to step up and wound him badly politically. That means framing his presidency as an existential threat to democracy. How many times have you ever heard that? Imagine if that were a drinking game. Now, enter the New York Times with its piece titled, Trump and allies forge plans to increase presidential power in 2025 and limit the independence of federal agencies. Now, reporters Maggie Haberman, Charlie Savage, and Jonathan Swan essentially want readers to believe that a huge swath of the federal government should work not to carry out the president's mission, but to act as a check against the president's mission. Now, The Times warns that Trump intends to strip employment protections from tens of thousands of career civil servants, making it easier to replace them if they don't carry out his agenda. Now, of course, I know what you're all thinking out there. You're thinking, wait a second, wait a second. Do you mean that the president of the United States can't fire federal employees who aren't doing their jobs? Well, of course, like clockwork, mess NBC steps in for the assist. If this didn't send a chill down the spine of those who care about democracy, I really don't know what would. This is textbook fascism. If you love Mussolini, you will love what Donald Trump is talking about for 2025. Donald Trump, the first major candidate in American history to say outright, I want a presidential dictatorship. Morning jokes. I guess Beschloss, a historian, does not know the Constitution. Remember, the founders only set out three branches of government, the judicial, the legislative, and the executive. Article two, read it, fellas, gives the president the authority over the executive branch. After all, he's the nation's chief executive. Still with me? But the left depends on a fourth branch of government, don't they? The administrative branch. They expect that branch will stop policies they don't like and they don't want being implemented. And forever grumpy scribblers like Ann Applebaum at The Atlantic are very worried that taming the bureaucracy, as Trump and DeSantis said they both want to do, would mean losing the expert class. Experts. Alexander Vindman and Anthony Fauci? This is a playbook that's designed to destroy whatever checks and balances there are in the system to remove potential uh, critics, ombudsmen, anybody who can check presidential power. It's also designed to remove experts. And naturally, The Times is also horrified that a Republican president would work to end the weaponization of our intel agencies as well. He plans to scour the intelligence agencies, state and defense bureaucracies for political bias. What a scandal. I can't believe Donald Trump would actually do that. Look, the real question here is this. Who governs America? Do the voters govern America through their elected officials? Or does a permanent bureaucracy that significantly constrains the power of elected officials run the government? Now, the Times POV is if you elect liberals, great. But if a conservative wins the presidency, then the bureaucracy should be able to resist the president's agenda with everything they've got. Now, the administrative state worked against Trump 24-7, and not just at justice. When he tried to push through executive orders on immigration, lawyers and bureaucrats in the agencies tried to step in and stop him at every turn. And when he told the Pentagon, I remember this, that he wanted to end the war in Afghanistan, oh, they all balked, delayed, and stymied his decision-making. It was so obvious. Now, President Reagan ran into the same trouble. His State Department worked against his agenda in many ways, and this has essentially been the case in almost every Republican administration since. But when Biden issued a blatantly unconstitutional executive order to forgive student loans, there was not a peep from any of the lawyers at any of his administrative agencies, at least nothing reported, no leaks, none of that. Ditto with his stop evictions move to try to help renters. And by the way, this game, I, I wanna point this out tonight, it's not just rigged to hurt Trump or maybe DeSantis, because again, both of them are serious about civil service reform. It's about blocking you, the American people. Let's be very clear about, about all of this. Everyone now should understand that the career civil service at state, the DOD, and DOJ 
support the Democrat Party across the board and most of the agencies as well. This is why Trump at the outset had so much trouble getting the DHS to stop illegals from crossing our border. Now, Obama moved to switch so many political appointees to career positions before he left office. You know why? Because he's smart. That's why he did it. But he didn't hear any objection. We, none of us did from people like Maggie or Jonathan or Charlie then. I, at least I don't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I wonder why we didn't hear much of an uproar about what Obama did. I'll tell you why. Because they prefer that the permanent liberal bureaucracy has the final say in everything. For us, conservatives, democracy is a process. You vote, we hope your vote's counted. <laughs> then elected officials are supposed to do what the voters want, what they campaigned on. But for the left, democracy is an outcome. If it's not dedicated to the goal of the global elites, it's a dictatorship or it's fascist. It's all so predictable. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.